Hi, how are you? In an upcoming video, I'm going to talk about how to pick a good breeder, but today I wanted to discuss the consequences of having rats that are poorly bred. Um, I'm going to be using my rats, some in my local community around me as well for descriptions of situations. Um, to make this a little more interesting than me just rambling on and you watching my face, which um, I'm going to do a voiceover over a bunch of videos, clips, and photos of my rats to make it just a little more fun to watch. Um, I hope the video is informative. There is a lot of talk and photos of health issues, some of which may be a little bothersome to some people. Um, so if that's not something you want to see, I would recommend you don't watch this video. Also just wanted to give a little disclaimer. This video is kind of a downer, but I feel like it's really important to address because there's just so many instances that keep popping up lately in my rat communities of people who want to just breed rats because they're sweet and friendly. Um, so let's get right into it. Come along. I just want to put a disclaimer on this that rats from poor breeding, pet stores, and oops litters can be very sweet and friendly. They can make good pets. However, I strongly caution against them and hopeful that this video will discourage backyard breeding as well as uneducated breeding. Backyard and uneducated breeding is acquiring two rats, either from another breeder, a pet store, feeder breeders, or oops litters, and then breeding them. Note that the from the other breeders is usually done without the person's permission who has produced the rats in the first place. Many breeders have a contract that they make you sign that specifically says that they will not allow this without prior knowledge. If you want to breed, many breeders do mentor newbies, but they tend to expect you to do your homework first. Know what kinds of things you want to breed toward and have a basic understanding of genetics, for example. At the very least, knowledge of lethal combinations. These are certain genetic combinations that produce babies that will die for one reason or another. You will also be expected to understand that not all rats make good pets and some will need to be culled, either due to temperament, litter size, ill health, or simply old age. It's important also to mention that culling does not necessarily mean putting to sleep. This varies depending on the breeder and what their practices are, but some will um, put to sleep and some will do what's called soft culling where they simply remove the rats from their program and then will um, keep them for the rest of their lives. Simply putting two sweet rats together and creating babies is just downright irresponsible. After a certain age, for example, it's dangerous to breed a rat. Some rats will develop aggression after breeding or getting pregnant, and some simply don't make good mothers. Then there's genetic issues, and that's what I want to talk about today. First, I'm going to give you a bit of backstory. I thought that I was doing my due diligence. Sometimes, bad breeders can say all the right things to adopters and pull the wool over their eyes, and this was the case for me. I adopted my first three rats from a breeder who was no longer breeding right now. She said all the right things, had videos of her rats as they climbed all over her, kissed her, and just dangled when picked up. I was led to believe she knew her stuff, and I could only find one negative review about a smell outside of her home, which, though weird, was not concerning, since I figure there's some people who have to complain about something no matter what. I had seen a post where she was rehoming some Agouti Rex males for another breeder she mentored, who was moving, and so I inquired about them, but not wanting a lone rat and not feeling like getting an adult rat and then introing babies later with zero rat experience, I decided to wait. When I go to reserve our boys, I asked about the Agouti males, but they had all been adopted out. This part of my story is important later. So I reserve our rats, a Blaze, a Black Berkshire, and a Fawn Self. We picked them up about five days before we're moving to another state. She let them 
me get them about three days before they turned five weeks, which was her normal rehoming date, due to me being well-researched and ready and us moving. I get them home and they seem fine, a little smelly, and their bellies were yellow, but otherwise fine. We go to hold our friendly tame babies, and our black falls, hops, runs off the couch, and took me about 45 minutes to get out from underneath, as he was absolutely petrified with fear. Every time we touch them, they poop everywhere. My kids were terrified of the poop. I later learned that this is called fear pooping and that baby rats who are totally unhandled and often are not temperament tested will do this. There's some situations where that's not the case, but in our situation, it most definitely was. Then we started handling them. The fawn nips fingers, and after a few times, he starts biting. I messaged the breeder. She told me he was so sweet and would have been her holdback if she needed one, so I'm convinced that it's my fault, something we've done wrong. She tells me to try flipping and pinning him to show who's boss, like you've often seen those dog trainers do on TV. Yeah. First of all, you can guess how that went. Second, it is freaking hard to catch a terrified baby rat. By day three, he's chasing and lunging to bite. But I still wasn't worried because she had a review that said an adopter hadn't bonded well with their rats, so they went back and swapped them out and liked the next batch better. So I get, I message her and tell the situation and that I'd like to swap for any white male with pink eyes. He was supposed to be my daughter's rat and I can't have a rat that she's terrified of and she's chosen white with princess eyes. So two days before our move to another state, an hour away I drive to pick up a new rat while my daughter is in school. I'm convinced at this point that I've done something wrong. Maybe I was too rough or not firm enough. Maybe he didn't like the kids. I picked out a rat from the four she brings out, and she tells me he's a Himalayan coat coloring, which is fine. He will gain dark points on his nose and tail as he gets older. Two days later, we move to Georgia. A few months later, I honestly don't recall exact timeline. The breeder messages me. Two of the agouti males are being returned. One is biting and will be cold, but the other is, quote, a sweetheart, tucks lovely and gets along with her babies. She remembered I was interested and has seen how well I spoil my boys, so she wanted to offer to me first. For the record, my videos and photos of my rats are public on my Facebook page for anybody to see. And she was on my friends list. I convinced my hubby that I want this rat. We drive up to get him. He's sweet and snuggly when I pick him up, and I'm instantly in love. It was meant to be. He smells like pee and cigarettes, though, so I decide to bathe him, which he hated. The next day, my husband leaves for church early and tells me that the kids have been messing with him, and he seemed agitated, so he sent them out of the room. I go to check, and he is doing dominant strutting, which you will see in this video. Marking with his feet, scooting all over, and not pictured is if I try to touch him, he would grab my fingers with his mouth. Right before I gave up, he chomped down on my finger between the middle and ring finger drawing blood. That's not on this video. I had a pretty emotional day. Hubs convinces me to give him a day or two to settle down and message the breeder to try again. After all, she's been helpful before. So I do. She gives me her phone number and I called her the next day. She tells me she thinks he's freaked out about being on fleece and to just grab him. He's not used to being allowed to come out on his own as he was a free range rat so I should use gloves at first if I, till I feel more confident, but that he's never bitten before and she's shocked. But she also suggests just putting him in with my babies, that he may be upset about being alone, being able to smell them, and she had no issues with him, so I shouldn't be worried. This should be a red flag, because with as aggressive as this rat is being in this video, this is hormonal-ish aggression issues, he is definitely not safe to just throw in the cage fully furnished with my babies. But I didn't know that at the time, so I put him in the cage. Thankfully, no one was hurt. I took him right out because he was definitely not interested in snuggles but fighting. So much so, he grabbed a wooden chew toy and bit down so hard that he drew his own blood in his mouth. I called the breeder again the next day, and she suggests a different intro method. I started working on that and then moved to the carrier method. After about a month, we have not been bitten, and he's finally introed into my boys. And I even see him snuggle with them some. He's also a perfect shoulder rat. I started at that point letting my kids play with him. My kids are playing in the playpen with all four rats when he started climbing into my daughter's lap. I still don't trust him, 
because he had something about his body language that was off. Every so often he gets riled up and starts scooting. I tell her to put her hand under him and move him off of her lap. This had never been a problem before, whereas if I tried to pick him up sometimes from above, he would act out a little bit. He didn't bite, but just things were off. Um, so she does. He climbed back up. We moved him again. She climbed back up. And then next thing I know, he bit her hand. Thankfully, I grabbed him so that he was not able to do more than scratch with his teeth, like, unlike when he bit me. I put him in the cage to cool down and later go to return one of my boys to the cage and he goes after him, like chases my rat around the cage with the rat in terror. Now, there's another clip coming up here where you'll see him in the, cave, in the playpen with my boys and you'll see that they are trying to instigate play by pouncing on him and wrestling and sniffing and licking and instead of playing, all he's interested in doing is scooting and peeing. All he wants to do is mark. The this is an extremely hormonal behavior, and you can even watch as George is kind of pouncing on him, and instead he kicks out with his back feet. Some people call this side kicking or side hopping. You see him digging with his little paws. Um, he's not interested in playing. All he wants to do is mark that whole area up so it smells like him. He's kind of got a scooting behavior. He just He's not interested in playing at all. Nibbles keeps trying, she's sniffing, all normal baby rat behaviors, and he's just not interested. This is when I notice that the boys are actually terrified of him. It's like it was a light bulb moment for me. I start examining my rats and find tiny little cuts all over them. Now, I do believe that they had mites from stress, but these were not typical scratches and things from mites. I've had to deal with those before, so I know what they look like. These were little cuts, like from teeth or back feet. Thankfully, I had just bought another cage, a ferret nation, and had cleaned it and reassembled. So my boys went in that cage and the Agouti Rex went in a different one. I was devastated but could not have a biting rat in my home with my kids. They love our babies. My other boys never bite. They don't bite fingers through bars. They can be scooped up from being asleep, cuddled, petted when while asleep, lick even fingers that taste like food. This is how well-bred rats should be, and we'll get to that later. But I can't risk my human kids' lives. So I contact the breeder to send him back, and she informs me that she doesn't do refunds. Her car is currently broken and the funds went to that. She will swap him out for another rat. I convince hubby and I've chatted with her a bunch but decide rather than wait for a specific color I just need this boy out of my house so my kids are safe. So we arranged to meet up. I found out later that although he was from another breeder it came from a different breeder's lines and should never have been adopted out because the lines had issues. I later found out um, probably about four months later after returning him, that he had killed one of the South Carolina breeders' males and severely injured a second, so I dodged a bullet there. We wound up bringing two baby rats home instead. They are sweet, though one is very shy, and it takes about a month to get him to feel confident and safe with us. He never bites, and we are careful to approach him gently like the frightened baby he is. To this day, he is one of my sweetest boys. Later, I find out that one of the new babies whole entire litter had to be culled for biting. He's the only one who doesn't bite in the whole group. During intros, Nibbles, our white rat that has a smudge on his nose here, um, starts having panic attacks. The South Carolina breeder doesn't have experience with this, or so she says, but another friend of hers does. This person, we're going to call them North Carolina breeder, is lovely and gives me all kinds of info and also informs me that Nibbles' sister and mother both have them as well. She gives me treatment ideas and is just so sweet. I still speak with her to this day. She has his sister and his mother as they're retired. And thankfully, South Carolina Breeder isn't continuing the line. Nibbles continue to have panic attacks randomly, but <clears throat> I used rescue remedy to stave them off. I figure out that his triggers are small, dark spaces. And in discussing this with North Carolina Breeder, it turns out that South Carolina breeder does not like pink-eyed rats and keeps them in small tiny bins in a dark closet until they are cold if they aren't adopted. I realize that is why his triggers are the way they are and that my rats are no longer sleeping in the dark. I always turn on a lamp or a nightlight. A few months later, 
I have my other rat, Fred, he's the one with the mask that you saw previously, neutered due to some hormonal issues beginning. This is one of the new babies and I had this done about five months old. For all of this, I have dealt with ongoing health issues with my boys. Nearly ever over a month, I was treating someone for respiratory illness, came to find out that they were kept in the crowded bins that my breeder took videos in. These bins were roughly about this big, maybe two and a half feet, and about two and a half feet tall, crowded with about 30 rats in them. And that's how they lived. I and many other adopters were under the impression that this is just how they were videotaped because she would change the bedding out when she would take videos to show the rats that were available. But apparently that's how they were um, living. I have no proof, but I believe that my rats had lung scarring due to these horrible conditions, which is causing the constant flares. Bedding of any kind other than fleece has made it much worse. So I've been using fleece for the last two and a half years because I can change it every other day, every three days, something like that. Um, because I'm a stay at home mom and I homeschool my kids. That's not a huge issue for me. It's just a lot of work. When I got my boys, they smelled of urine, but the smell went away after about three days in a clean cage, so I really forgot about it and didn't think anything of it. Remember, I was a brand new rat owner. Um, I kept reading that they smelled, so I figured that was normal, and then when it faded, I thought perhaps the issue was due to them being scared and peeing on each other in the carrier on the ride home. Now I have to go back to the video so that you can see pictures again. So here are mac and cheese's bottom teeth. This is important for the next part. You can see that there's a little gap, they're close together, and they're straight up and down. These are normal rat teeth. They can spread out a little bit. This is how healthy rat teeth should look. Here's George. George does not have healthy teeth, and they tend to spread to the side too much, which causes that one tooth to grow too far. As a result, he has to have a tooth trimmed every two weeks. If he does not, it can cause an infection and it can make it hard for him to eat. So I'm gonna read again from my little script. I actually scripted this whole thing out so I wouldn't get too far off track. Um, George's tooth issues, I don't know exactly when they started, but I suspect that they started long before I noticed them because his weight would always go up and down and I couldn't figure out why he wouldn't hold his weight really well. Once I noticed his teeth issues and started getting them trimmed regularly, I noticed that his weight would go down when his teeth would get long. Um, having this issue is called malocclusion, if I'm, I think I'm pronouncing that right, but basically it can be a sign of old age, but it is usually genetic, and a good breeder will actually breed away from this. Um, and good adopters should be telling their breeders when their rats have these issues. Um, he can't grind his own teeth down because of this. Rats don't usually need things that they have to chew on. They keep their teeth down by bruxing, which is where they chatter their teeth, and they can do this naturally if the teeth line up properly like this but because this tooth goes over here he can't grind it because his teeth don't line up and this tooth will just keep growing and growing and growing whereas this one won't until eventually this tooth either breaks or I have to take him to get it trimmed which right now is about every two to three weeks for him um, Thankfully, my vet does not charge me to have his teeth trimmed. She does not have to put him under. They wrap him in a towel and he sits still and they clip it really quick. Um, I don't know if she does this for other people or not, so I'm not advertising that. But the reason I bring that up is because that's not normal. Most vets have to put them under or, um, or even just sedate them a little bit so that they can trim their teeth or grind them down. Um, and if that were the case, I probably would not be able to afford having George as a pet because this can cost around $175 or more depending on the vet and their experience level. Um, there's no way I could afford that every two weeks. He has also had several abscesses near his groin, which can be common in older male rats, um, but they shouldn't show up as often as he has so far. Now I'm going to switch back. Blue has chronic tear duct issues. One eye is always moist and gross. It turns out this line has an issue with tear ducts. 
He's been to the vet twice. We can't find anything stuck in the eye or causing it to do this regularly. He's also had a abscess pop up, which we were sure was a tumor and I wasn't planning to get it removed. But then as you can see here, it ruptured, which is normal with an abscess and it drained and it went away on its own. Um, he has healed up with regular care and medication, but now he has some tumors on his tail and on his side and under his armpit. Because he's two and a half, I do not plan to put him through surgery. Once I see his quality of life deteriorate, I'll have to put him to sleep at my vet. Poochie has arthritic hand end degeneration. This may be related to his genetics and it may not. Blue and George are older by a few months, but Poochie acts like a little old man. He falls off things easily, can't flip himself over, and generally has a harder time getting around. He still enjoys free roam, eats, drinks, and snuggles with his brothers, and he was keeping himself fairly clean, but obsessively clean. Now he started barbering or chewing his fur short. He also has one eye that simply won't clear up despite meds or regular cleaning or anything, and I'm not sure why, but he basically appears to have poor foreign around his eye all the time, and it looks gross. He's had chronic URIs his whole life, and I basically had to treat him every month as he sneezes all the time. None of the other boys have had this issue as often as he has. Thankfully, we adopted mac and cheese from Whispering Grove, and I cannot get over the difference. He wants to be picked up and handled from the moment we met him. He gives kisses, boggles, plays with us on day three. So smart and sweet. He's already figured out his name. He comes when I call him, and he is just the best little rat. He also did not fear poop like the previous ones. This rattery has restored my faith in pet ownership of rats and the hobby itself. I'm going to apologize if somehow this microphone picks up my children because they um, are playing right across the hallway from me. Um, and I'm going to go back to reading from my paper because I wrote this out so that it would make sense. Let's go back to the Agouti Rex that we had briefly. Oh my goodness, there is no way that this rat would have passed any actual temperament testing. And this is why first-gen rats should not be adopted out, except from when they come from established breeders with good stock. That would be an exception. Um, some really good breeders will adopt out first-generation rats to specific adopters that they know will keep in touch and will contact them if there's issues. That's acceptable too. Ralphie would never have been in this group. Um, that was his name. I can't tell you how many bad-tempered rats we currently have in the community near me. So many that have had to be neutered just to fix the hormonal aggression issues. There was a case recently that was just so bad. Um, thankfully, a neuter fixed the problem for the adopter, but they should never have left the breeder's house. It should never be your job as an adopter to have to get surgery to make your rats good pets. The breeder should be breeding for good health and good temperament, and they should be checking for that temperament before they handle. A well-bred rat will not constantly sneeze, bite, yes, even if a little bit scared. Um, they will generally be healthy till they reach old age. My older guys are very old. Two and a half is a long life for a rat. They don't usually live that long. There are some rats that live longer. Those are exceptions. They've been dealing with those issues literally their entire lives, though. The URIs started around the six months age. Um, maybe, honestly, even sooner. I don't really remember. That's really not an acceptable or... Uh, it's just not acceptable, period. It's not normal, and it should not be considered the norm. And as adopters, if we don't say something about these issues... They're going to become the norm because everybody's rats are going to be bred this way. With pet store rats and feeder rats, you're essentially getting a mixed bag of genetics and temperament. Many die shortly after adopting simply because they were sold sick to the pet store. I can't tell you how many times I have also personally seen this in my Facebook rat groups, especially the ones close to me. Even getting a rat from a show is a huge issue. This is how viruses and things are spread. A breeder near us was recently blacklisted for selling sick animals at shows. And then there's the temperament issues. You have no way to vet the breeder ahead of time to know if this person has well-tempered rats. You can't read their reviews. 
it's just a horrible idea. Um, we had an adopter recently in one of my local groups who came out and said that she had adopted some rats from a show and they died within a week. I got off track. Sorry, I do that a lot because this is something I'm really passionate about. But rat breeding should not be done just to get cute rats. That's how my original breeder did things. And I looked out with the temperament part because she started with good rats from ethical breeders and then got off track. But it's not the case with most people. And definitely I got the horrible genetics side of that. So please, please, please do not breed your rats. I know they are sweet and you'll miss them when they are gone, but support ethical breeders and rescue from a rescue if possible. Then you'll be able to provide wonderful homes for more rats in the future. I'll be doing a video soon on how to find an ethical breeder and what things to look for so that you know how to pick them. Cause guess what? You're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. Till then, give your fur kids a kiss and a kickle for me. Yeah, rats like to be tickled, at least mine do. Um, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Dislike it, give it a thumbs down. Tell me why in the comments below. If it's about culling, you're not gonna change my mind on it, but I'm happy to discuss. Um, it's just, it is what it is. I've seen too much and my mind cannot be changed on it. Give me a subscribe and hit the notifications bell if you wanna see more videos and um, I'll be doing a homeschool video next, so look for that probably early next week. I am hoping to get that out soon so that everyone can see it and this video won't be the last thing on my channel and it makes you really sad. So, till then, bye.